I'm in Ray. This is Jack Burton and the Pork Chop Express, and I'm talking to whoever's listening. Morning to war camp to the Johnny Bay. This is the doctor. I am I. Everything's perfectly all right now. We're fine. We're all fine here. Now, thank you. How are you? Following the nerd. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to the Following the Nerd show. I am Saxon. And I am Two Penny. What have you been up to this week, Anton? Billy Fighty Robot. Class. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you something. My head feels like it's filled with cotton wool. Right, bye. It just it feels like time's going too fast. Too fast. It is. Right. And it has to stop. I'm going to write a strongly worded letter to the gods of time because it feels like five months ago we were in here doing the show last week. That was a week ago. Oh, yeah. And I just, I kind of feel like Bill Murray <laughs> in uh, Groundhog Day hmm. where it's just like, what? <laughs> this again. <laughs> and I'm sure the listeners feel the same way. So tonight we're we've got a couple of things to talk about, but first and foremost, what what I do with my life at the moment is I sit in a dark room with yourself once a week, and we talk about Doctor Who. <laughs> well, yeah, um, <laughs> that sums it up a lot. Um, man, I gotta tell you, the last Sunday's episode was sublime. Yeah, I loved it. Kablam! It was called. It was uh, basically the Doctor versus Evil Amazon. Yeah, 100%. and and. Based on the trailer and based on the, the description of the episode, I thought, oh, here we go. But no, really great episode. And I forget the, the guy's name that wrote the script for this episode. Mm. Give him the job. If Chibnall doesn't want it, give this guy the job because he gets it. Yeah. I I really, I like a couple of minor nitpicks. But aside from that, I was really impressed with this week's episode. It was a great story. It had some fantastic twists. Mm. Everyone at least got something to do. It also reminds you of the classic series. Yeah. Like, the, like episodes like that where there's like with potholes and twists and stuff. And you're like, oh, this is this is getting nice for you. Old vibes now. An evil bubble wrap. Well, well, the one thing that still confused me is we were having jokes about that. Yeah. And it became a thing. <laughs> They're listening to us now. They are. They're really following us around. So a couple of points that um, we did talk about in the review, but unfortunately... I had to leave on the cutting room floor because you and me, Anthony, you know when we get going, yeah, we don't. There's, stop. there's no stopping us. No. So that unedited video was about an hour and ten minutes long oh of us God. just sitting talking about the episode. So naturally, a lot of things got cut out. One of the things, and the comment section tore us apart over this, was right. the fact that we didn't mention the fez. Was it necessary? Not really, no. no. But just everyone was going like, "Oh, but the fez! You have to talk about the fez." There was a fez. It was on her head. I was like, oh my god, look at that. It's a callback to a doctor we had like about four or five years ago. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. that's class. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> what can you talk about? Because you, like, exactly. you go into the detail, like, it's a fez that's made out of this material. And she looked terrible wearing it, too. Yes. It really did not suit her. Oh, I, I actually thought that I went, oh, don't tell me for the rest of her incarnation, she's going to start wearing a fez. I thought that's what it was going to be. See, I didn't think that. I thought it was just a little sort of nudge and a little kind of callback, you know, like, oh, hey, remember this? Tra la 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 la. I was happy that it was, but I actually did think she was going to be wearing that. I was like, oh. Oh, my God, no. same here, too. But yeah, so that was Doctor Who. And we've got some big Doctor Who news stories coming up later on in the episode, along with other things, too, like Marvel and DC. And that seems to be all there is. But yeah, oh, and we went to see Fantastic Beasts. Yes. On Saturday. Oh, my God. I actually had a good time. I love this. I mean, I know it's not great. Like, it, it, it's not a great movie, but I can sort of now understand what Mark was talking about because he did the review for followingthenerd.com mm-hmm. and he said it was a two-star movie, but it's a three-star movie if you're a Harry Potter fan. Yeah. And now I understand what that means because the amount of callbacks and nice little sort of nudges and references and universe building and what have you, I was digging that. Yeah, I'll not lie to you, I really was. Like The, the thing that got it for me... And, you know, spoilers if you haven't seen it, but, again, not really, because it's got nothing to do with the plot and get a life. But <laughs> they have the Mirror of Erised. Yes. And it's used in a very beautiful scene. Yes. And that's all I'll say, and I'll say no more than that. But, my God, just just that alone, you know, it, it ties it in nicely with the first Harry Potter movie, because there's a scene where, obviously, Harry discovers the Mirror of Erised and he sees his mum and dad in it. Mm-hmm. And he gets a wee bit obsessed with it. So he starts, you know, sitting, like sneaking out of the dorm rooms every night and sitting down to look at this mirror and just look at his family. 
Yeah. Like, it's explained a lot better in the book, because in, in the movie, it's just sort of a, blah, there it is, right, bye. But in the book, it goes into serious detail about how he does this every night. And he not only does he see his mum and dad, he sees, like, his aunts and uncles and, like, you know, like, uh, cousins and mm. extended family. Uh, until one night, Dumbledore's there, and Dumbledore catches him. And Dumbledore basically says, look, men have withered away in front of this because it shows you your, your biggest desires, but you're never going to get them. So after seeing how it's used in this new Fantastic Beasts movie, I was like, that makes sense. Yeah. And I love the fact that with, with Dumbledore himself, <laughs> that he was not like all over the, the the movie. He was just nicely put into No, he was. He was sparingly but, used. Yeah. I like that. Also, it was nice to be better seeing, like, you know, Hogwarts and all them things. You're like, oh my God, this, this is nice. This is nice. The one thing I did do before we went and seen it, I went and binge watched all the Harry Potters. Just, uh, so you were just, you were queued yeah, in. Yeah. Just, and did you watch Fantastic Beasts the I first did, one? I did. How did um, I, I find them? I watched the whole lot. I was like, just to get back into the whole thing, because like with Harry Potter, I, I, it kind of died for me. Yeah, no, it, it died a death for me too. I mean, I, again, I think I've told this story on air before, but you know what? It's a great story, and it's me, and I love the sound of my own voice. That's why I'm on the radio. <laughs> so I'll tell it again. Oh, so I'm sitting watching Deathly Hallows Part Two in the cinema at the midnight screening. Mm-hmm. I guess about. Two sort of quarter past two in the morning, maybe, and I'm dying because like I've worked the next morning and everything, so I'm just like, oh, I'll just end. <laughs> and it's a bit where uh, Voldemort and all his followers are attacking Hogwarts, oh, the yes, big yes. final battle at the end. And he does this kind of ceasefire thing, and he starts like projecting his voice magically into the school. And instead of going like, give me Harry Potter or I will smite you all. You know, like a big, serious, intimidating voice. He whispers. Like most of Ray Fiennes' dialogue in the Harry Harry Potter movies, it's all whispering. Have you not noticed that? He's maybe menacing. But but it's not. It's annoying. (laughs) And it got super annoying for sleep-deprived, when did that movie come out? 2011? 21-year-old Stephen. Where I was just sitting in the cinema going, please end. Like, like, I think someone had spilled, like, <laughs> melted ice cream or something on the floor. And <laughs> I started to smell, like, you know, when milk goes off. And I was just, oh, oh just end. I want this experience time. over. And so, next thing you know, he starts projecting his voice into the school and he's going, Give me Harry Potter. <laughs> if you don't give me Harry Potter, I'll be very annoyed because you didn't give me Harry Potter. <laughs> Right, I just kept saying, "Give me Harry Potter" over and over again. I went, "I'm done, I'm done." Like no harm to you. I've been obsessed with the book since I was like, when did the first one come out? When I was about like ten or something. Hmm. Like I've been obsessed with them since then. I love these characters. I love this universe. I love the world. I even love the fact that Stephen Fry does the audio books. He's fantastic at them as well. I've loved all the movies. Like I still have vivid memories of sitting in the cinema. A, a quaint little. Uh, like energetic 11 year old boy the opposite of how I am now <laughs> yeah. and and like the first shot of the movie was Privet Drive like the street sign for Privet oh Drive God, yes, and, yes. and like I remember seeing that on the big screen going like oh this is blowing my mind because I was reading about this and now I'm seeing it yeah. it's insane and I just remember that's that's when Harry Potter broke for me was yeah. just give me Harry Potter Voldemort killed it for you. Yeah, then. but yeah, I've I enjoyed the first one. I enjoyed the first Fantastic Beasts. Hmm. I think it's it's very deceptive in what it is because it's called Fantastic Beasts, and where to find them was the first one. Now this one's Fantastic Beasts: The Crimes of Grindelwald. Um, I didn't realize they had a weird name. Yeah, yeah, Grindelwald. I, I thought it was Grindelwald. Grindelwald. Yeah. yeah. No, see, that's how we would say it because we're rough scum. But, <laughs> but for the we're uncultured swines. But yes, for for the norms out there, for like the posh people, you know, born with the silver spoon in their mouth or possibly shoved somewhere else, uh, they're they're the ones that go like, it's the crimes of Grindelwald because it's like German or something, you know, yeah. But yeah, it's it's very deceptive. You've got some massive energy tonight. <laughs> oh, it's I am fueled by rage. But, oh, it's just a sack, okay. <laughs> yeah, so it's called Fantastic Beasts, and it's based on this really tiny little book that J.K. Rowling wrote for Comic Relief one year. And it was one, it was Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and Quidditch Through the Ages. And there were basically two textbooks oh, so from 
uh, the Harry Potter universe. Oh, okay. So like, you know when Harry's going to Hogwarts and yeah. he has a ladder and everything and Hagrid's like, you're a wizard, Harry! And he's like, I'm a what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he gets like the letter from Hogwarts and says like, you will have to have this from Diagon Alley and it gives like, the list of like potion books and stuff mm-hmm. he needs. Fantastic Beast is on that list. Ah, okay. So for comic relief, J.K. Rowling wrote these two books for free as part of the charity and put them out. So kids could go out and buy them and, and go like, I'm going to Hogwarts. Look, I've got my books. That's and, pretty nice. And it's, it's a nice little like book. And it's, it's basically, it's written like a textbook you would have at school. So it's like, like Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is a list of like, you know, like all the different little creatures that you see in the Harry Potter universe. Oh, so like, yes, yes. Like a high self. There's a section on high selves. There's a section on Grindylows. There's dragons. a section on dragons, this, yeah. that, and the other. And Quidditch is basically, it reads like a sports manual. Like um, uh, like all the like records of all the best fights and, yeah. and all the best like um, tournaments and everything and and the rules and like what the quaffle is and what the golden snitch is and so forth um, and that's all it is. So with this, it's it's it, it's a Harry Potter prequel, but obviously they can't keep calling it Harry Potter because Harry Potter's not in it; he's not even alive at this point. So they had to call it something else, and they decided to go with Fantastic Beasts. That's clever. And it's very misleading in that, like if you sort of view it and judge it as a Harry Potter movie yeah. then yeah it makes a lot of sense and it's very fun and you, you know it, it is one of those ones and I hate this phrase but it's switch your brain off mm. and just enjoy it you know because it's it is one of those things where it's 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 made for the fans so oh, the fans yeah. can go yeah. oh my god I remember that bit oh I remember this oh look at that they're using this and, and this is how this is set up and, and that's where Nagini the snake comes from and everything I, I will say one thing I really liked how she was yeah. introduced that was really nice. But like as a movie, it's it's all over the show. Like I I would hate to be someone that isn't well versed in Harry Potter watching this. Here, imagine someone who was meant to direct it and hadn't got a clue walking into this. <laughs> Are you sure that's not what happened? <laughs> Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> but no, like I I had a lot of fun with it and I enjoyed it. And also the guy, you know the uh the American guy that's um like he's under a love potion at the start of this movie. Yes. Him. Yes. He's in The Walking Dead. Is he? Yeah, he plays. Um, oh, I forget his name now, but he's he's one of the new characters that was introduced after Rick Grimes left. Oh, okay. and, and it's so bizarre watching. Is he good, him walking. good or bad? Oh, he's great. Yeah, like he's he's a musician. Right. And he's really into like like saving instruments and stuff. So like he broke into this um, like rich like man, the rich person's mansion mm. and stole an original Stradivarius um, violin oh, from cool. the, the the wee girl's bedroom. Because, like, they were all dead anyway. No, like, there were zombies. So, like, he, he nicked it. <laughs> Michonne cut it in half with her katana. Why? <laughs> it broke him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course it was. It was wonderful. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's really bizarre watching Fantastic Beasts and seeing him in it as this sort of, like, bumbling, I'm a comedy character, and it cuts to him in The Walking Dead. And, yeah, he's a bumbling comedy character. But, but they're killing his violin. <laughs> but they killed his violin, yeah. So, but, yeah, man, I've, I'm, I'm actually enjoying Rick Grimes' this Walking Dead. That's good, because I, I, the way the last couple of times you were talking about it, leading up to it, I thought that was you done with Walking Dead. No, and then no, boom, no, no. as soon as you talk about this new series, you're like, I, I really like it. Series 9 has been on the money yeah. so far for me. It really has. Like, Rick Grimes' final five episodes were perfect. Um, and they're, they're handling it with a lot of sensitivity, now that he's gone. So they actually and are still, they're not just blanking him. You still them. feel his presence, and you feel Carl's presence. Ah, throughout nice. it even though they're not there anymore because everything that the survivors are doing now they're doing in his name so in his honour basically continuing yeah and like trying to work together and stuff Maggie's just disappeared right she's away like so the last time you saw her was the last time you saw Rick Grimes because she broke and just went off she morning. went off like halfway through last season they bump into this woman on the road and it's her and, like, her two sons, I think it was, and they're, they're in, like, this sort of VW camper van. And they stopped Maggie in the middle of the road, and they went, look, here's this book, and it'll teach you how to build a windmill, how to, like, make food, how to make clothing and stuff, and it's called The Key to the Future. Hmm. So Maggie's a bit distrustful, but she takes the book anyway, and the two of them keep in touch, yeah. and, like, they send letters to each other all the time. And then in last Sunday's episode, just completely out of the blue, uh, one of the characters just happens to mention, oh, um, Maggie's still gone. Like, her and Herschel are away. And Michonne didn't even know this. So how the audience finds out is how Michonne finds out. 
where Michonne like has to take this group, this new group that she found, consisting of the guy from Fantastic Beasts, up to the hilltop mm-hmm. community, which is what the community. 